So I'd like to talk about some of the things that could go wrong when using the drill press. Uh, the first thing is you could cut yourself or burn yourself if you were to touch this drill bit while it's moving or if you were to touch it quickly after using it because after using it, it will also be quite hot. Um, the material you're drilling also can be quite hot. People have this tendency to drill something and then they want to touch it and that's how you get burns and sometimes you can also get cut. Drilling operations form metal shavings and metal chips and those metal shavings and metal chips can be quite sharp. You know, something like this has razor sharp edges and so you have to be mindful when handling your shavings so that you don't cut yourself. Also, you can get small metal slivers in your fingers, which are so small that you can almost not even see them, um, but they do hurt and uh, they'll drive you crazy. So you want to make sure you're not using bare hands to clean off your metal. If you're going to clean off your metal, always use a hand broom. So, and if you're going to clean off the table, same thing. Use a hand broom to clean away any metal shavings or chips so that that prevents you getting cuts and prevents you getting uh, metal slivers. Now, in terms of personal protection, the personal protective equipment you have to wear on the drill press is a set of safety glasses. That is the minimum requirement for drilling operations. If you are drilling really large diameter holes, uh, which can sometimes produce very large chips, with a really sharp bit, these chips can be quite long and can start spinning around quite large. And so in a situation where you are drilling with large bits, you would want to also place a face shield on. And you would also need to have a hand broom with you because as those shavings are developing and they start to fling around, you want to have a hand broom nearby to just offer some uh, interference. Those chips will swing around and hit the hand broom and it will break off and fall to the table rather than getting so long that they get you. So if you need safety glasses, you would add a face shield in situations where you're having very large shavings that are spinning. You would also have a hand broom available at all times when drilling to make sure that that controls the large shavings and breaks them off early. Those are the personal protective equipment that you need. You also need to make consideration for your clothing because in the drilling operations, when you have something spinning at a high RPM, this machine here has a maximum RPM of uh, 3,200 revolutions per minute. So that thing is whipping around really fast. And if you have something hanging down from your neck, like jewelry, hoodie strings, headphones, a tie, um, or if you have long hair hanging down, even long sleeves when uh, working on this machine, you run the risk of having those things caught. And if they do get caught, they will pull you in very fast. You will not have time to react at that type of speed. So you have to secure your clothing, all loose clothing and all those things that I've mentioned before going onto this machine. Another thing that we're concerned about is making sure that your material is secured. If I was doing a drilling operation just like this, there's a couple things that are wrong. First of all, when I drill through my material, I'm going to end up damaging the machine. I'll drill right through into the table. Some tables have a hole in it that should be lined up with your drill bit so that instead of drilling into the table, you drill through the hole. This table doesn't have that. So that's one concern is you damaging the machinery. In order to mitigate that, you would have to put some kind of a wooden plate in place. And then that would mean that when you break through your material during drilling that you actually drill into the wooden plate. You'll also need to consider how you're going to stop your material from flinging around. Because if I was to drill this, it would likely bind and cause my metal to start swinging around. And that's quite dangerous because that can hit me or hit other people around. Um, and this is at waist level so it could actually cut my abdomen. It's quite dangerous. And um, we're going to talk about in an upcoming video a variety of ways to secure your material so that that does not happen. Now there is also a risk when you are adjusting the height of the table. We've got two different machines here that have two different mechanisms for adjusting the heights of these tables. I'm going to talk about them and tell you why there are some risks here. We take a look at this drill press here. In order to raise or lower the height of the table, it's got a gear system. What we have is a lever that would allow us to lower or raise this table. And we've also got a lock here. So in order to do this, if we start just turning right now, we actually run the risk of bending this gear here. And these gears are quite costly to replace. So you have to make sure before you adjust the height of this type of table, you unlock it. And this lock lever here, it would be turned counterclockwise to loosen and clockwise to tighten. So when I look at it from the side over here, if I was standing on this side, 
I would look that this is counterclockwise and that loosens this off. So loosen that lever first and that allows you to actually make these height adjustments to go lower or higher on this drill press. And then lock that in place securely and check to see that that's not moving. All right? These are quite easy to adjust. You just have to remember to unlock it, otherwise you might damage this machine. Now on this side over here, this is the one that I am concerned about your personal safety. This table does not have any type of a gear to hold it in place. If I unlock this table to adjust the height of this table, um, this table is gonna just drop. And that's why somebody has placed this automotive spring in place. This has been put here to stop this table from slamming all the way down and potentially hitting people's feet or toes. They placed a spring in place to stop it here and to sort of catch it. But you need to understand that if you just simply pull this lever, I'm gonna demonstrate this right now on purpose. If I pull this lever and let go, it wants to fall, okay? Now that's not very dramatic, but it could be depending on how it starts to fall. So what we wanna make sure we do when we are adjusting this type of a table is before we release this lock, make sure you are holding the table in close here, not out to the end, but somewhere in close here. Hold that table, unlock it, and then lower it or raise it to the desired position. And then also, this table does have a hole through the center of it. So if you come and take a look, there's a hole through the center of this table, and that should be aligned with your drill bit before locking it in place. And you would always check by raising or lowering the drill bit to see that it is fitting through that hole to prevent drilling the table. So again, to recap that, my concern with this type of a drill press is it has nothing to hold it up once you let go of the lock. It could go crashing down, it could hit you in the thigh, knee, or shins um, with enough force to break. So make sure you are holding it in place before you let go of the lock and make sure when you put it into position that you line up the hole before locking it. So that concludes our video on what are some of the things that could go wrong while using a drill press and the types of uh, considerations that you need to make. Look for an upcoming video on how to set up the drill press to do your drilling operations. And that's going to include how to mount your materials. And we'll have a video as well on how to set the speeds for these drill press to the appropriate speeds.